I am so excited about the Alstom Motor S18 1500 watt fat tire bike for off-roading. This is a full suspension bike that we went looking for a new trail to go ahead and take it off. And we found this really awesome trail on the backside of the mountains. And you'll be able to see why I think this bike is perfectly suited for those of you who want to get off-road and have some adventure. The 1500 watt motor on the back is a peak 1500 watts and it gives some really nice smooth acceleration it's a big motor so this bike is best suited for somebody who's probably about five seven and above i'm only five five you'll see in the footage that it's fine for me when i'm riding it but just keep in mind when you do come to a stop because of the height of the bike someone at my height five five you will have to be able to be a stronger rider hold up the weight of something like this but five seven five eight Anybody above that should have no problem. You'll really enjoy this. And the best thing about it is right now, Alster Motor is giving a $360 discount. So at the time of the launch of this video, there is a link below that will take you to the website and the code, the discount code in the description, make sure you put that in before checkout. You'll get this bike for under $1,400. In fact, I believe it's even under $1,350. And that is an incredible price for what you get. You'll see all the specs in the video, the ride footage and the unboxing. I'll see you in the video. Don't forget to use the link and also the discount code to get this at an amazing deal. I'll see you in the video. Unboxing of the Alstom Motor S18 1500 was a really easy process. Basically, once I got the bike out of the box and put on a stand, I then added flat out tire sealant to the front and rear tire just to make sure I didn't get any flat since we're taking it on a trail I've never gone before. Once that was done, I then took off the wrapping or all the protection that was on the bike itself, then added the handlebars, then the fender and front headlight, put on the wheel as well. And at that point, I put on the seat, tested the battery, make sure we had power, and then adjusted the handlebars for my reach and I was ready to ride. All right, so here we have the Alstom Motor S18 1500. This is a 1500 watt beast of a bike. And I don't usually like to use the word beast because it seems so overplayed, but I don't know what else to explain how this bike actually is performing out there. We actually came out to this canyon area today uh, because I wanted to go in and take one of the bikes out on a full like off-road style. And we just had a whole bunch of rains come through. So there was a little bit of mud, which really gives the effect of it. You'll get to see some of that footage. But let's go ahead and start from the back side of this bike here first. First, we have the 26 inch by four fat tire bike. So that's gonna give you, of course, you know, traction to ride pretty much everywhere. But check out the size of this 1500 watt motor. So that is basically where everything is just pushing this bike all the way through. And what's really cool about it is that not only do we have 180 millimeter disc mechanical brake rotors in the back here, but we also have rear suspension. And this rear suspension makes every little bump like one fifth the actual feeling of it. So you can kind of fly through a place like this without feeling as though you're just getting rocked by everything that's going on here. So moving back from here toward the front here, it is a big bike, but imagine I'm actually five foot five inches and What's really weird is no matter how big it really looks, when I'm riding it, it doesn't feel big. It actually fits really well. I was a little concerned when I was putting it together. I think this is big. But um, the seat distance to the handlebar is actually not too bad. Actually, when I'm actually riding it, I could probably, I pushed it all the way forward when I adjusted it. I could probably move it back about a half inch. And I also don't have the seat all the way down because there's so much clearance with the pedal to the ground here 
that this clearance allows me to be up higher that I could actually bring the seat up higher. So that does leave one problem though, is that I am higher, the seat's higher, and that does mean that when I try to put my feet down, I do have to come off further down to the ground, which is fine, because as far as you wanna be higher when you're actually going through a, you know, like terrain that we were going through earlier today. So the other cool thing is that check out this paint <laughs> or this covering. I mean, this camouflage is actually really, really cool. I, I don't know how to explain how cool that looks, um, but it really does fit the terrain that we have here and it doesn't look so dirty when I'm running it out here. It also does have, from the back here, we have an integrated rear light and that is actually a tail light that does work when you hit the brakes. So it does actually light up further, so you do have that. Now, of course, one thing that I did notice is that it will block the view of the tail light with the fender that's here, uh, which is, I guess it's, it's, it's something to think about, but uh, not really that big of a deal, and you know, as per se. I'd rather have a tail light than not have one just to worry about this. You can always remove this rear fender, but I'm glad I brought it because the mud that was flying up today was actually really bad. So it does come with a plastic fender that kind of flaps here. It is very functional and it's really light. It doesn't actually, the thing is it doesn't really make a lot of noise. If I, I like, I really like plastic fenders. The only thing I, I guess I don't really care for is that uh, it got a little, I guess, um, twisted in shipping it and it got held so that it has a little bit of a, a odd shape that's on here. But um, as time goes on, maybe I get a heat gun, warm it up and then actually straighten it out myself. But as far as functionality, keeps it nice and firm. I mean, or nice and usable the way that we have it here. Again, we do have textural Aries mechanical disc brakes. Now for a bike that can go up to 30 miles an hour, I would say that it would probably have been better if there was some um, hydraulic brakes on here. But for the most part, what I could do is I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe even replace this mechanical with the one of those hydraulics for like, it's like $30 and just then get a little more traction on it. Now, that being said, there's nothing wrong with the brake functionality. It's just that uh, hydraulic brakes have a little more, I guess, softer sensitivity, but these work perfectly fine. In fact, they work really good. I really do like the way they feel when I was coming back down through the trail down the downhill part of it. Um, we do have tires that can actually be pumped up. It's now at a full 20 PSI, which is what's recommended for it. I saw in the manual it did say 30 PSI is what they wanted to, but I think 20 was actually enough to go ahead and make it. That's uh, the max that it has. With the dual suspension, it actually just absorb all the, the shocks anyway. So it's actually really nice here. The other thing that I, I actually do like is that it does have this kind of soft, wider seat. Um, you know, some companies go really cheap on the seats here. They didn't. They, they, they got a good, comfortable seat. I really, really like this seat. Uh, it is comparable to some of the higher end other like cruiser style bikes that I've actually come across. So this, I have no problem. I could ride all day on, for sure. Not an issue with that. Now, this frame design, I gotta say, when I first saw it, I thought, this looks either really weird or really cool. And you know, when I finally got, that's when I saw the picture on the website, but when I got it in front of me, this is actually, I mean, it's a really cool looking bike. This rear suspension that they put in here, it does actually work very, very well together. And housed in here, we have a 30 amp controller. So that's where you're getting, you know, almost 1440 watts coming out from a 48 volt battery going into 30 amps through there, all the way into your power that's in the backside here. So this design here is very well, it's actually not that heavy. I mean. It is heavy because of its size. I mean, think about it. There's a 1500 watt motor in the back. That's not gonna be light. But where they did save on some of the, uh, the weight is on a 15 amp hour battery. So what I do think they might've wanted to do is this battery is not that big. I mean, this is the size of my hand here. And let me show you, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off here. By turning the key this way, it actually pops pushing in and it'll pop out a latch that's in the bottom here. And to make sure it doesn't fall out, there's a second keyhole here that we turn this way, and that releases the second pin. So I'm taking the key out here. And what we do now is we can push the battery from the back side of the bike out. So now this is the battery that we have here. So this frame design here, again, this is only a 15, it has a little handle. This is only a 15 amp hour battery. So they're not, you're not gonna get a whole lot of range like some of these other big cruisers that have a 20 amp hour. They do say that it's about a 20 mile range, which I think is gonna be pretty accurate from 20 to 35 miles. I think that 20 miles is gonna be pretty accurate on that. Uh, and then you can just stick this battery back in here. And of course, with the key, we have the two pins. 
So then we can lock this back into place here, just making sure that's in here. And then holding that in here. Now this is one of those bikes, not only do you need to make sure you have the key in, but you can pull out the key and this is an off position. The bike will not run without the key in. You do need to put it in and turn it to the on position here. And the key won't come out once it's on the on position. And that will allow you to go ahead and start up the bike there. So we have this design also integrating this kind of cool looking battery right into it. So it doesn't have this like big bulky thing and it does fit very well into it as well. And with two locks, I'm very confident I have had batteries fall out of bikes in the past. Not when I was riding it, when I let somebody ride it. So this way I know that I actually have two pins that will hold it in there because you don't ever want to ruin your battery that way. The next thing that we have here is our front suspension. And it has, of course, your preload adjustments here on the top. And then we also have our lockout here on the other side here so we can lock it out. Now it is pretty soft because for somebody my weight, I'm going to go ahead and push down and you can see that just doing this, the zoom suspension is really soft and it really makes a big difference in, like I said, riding and terrain that we have here. In the back side, I don't know if I can, you can kind of see it going up and down here on the back, but um, when, you're, when you're riding and you're actually standing on it, it really does have a good feel to that. So we have that in the back side here as well. and. Then we have these nice wide handlebars here. And if possible, let's see, I'm gonna turn it on, see if we can actually see what the screen looks like. Cause it does have a pretty cool looking screen here. Goes through a cycle on a Buddha. And once you're going, you're ready to go. And um, here's something that's really cool. You go ahead and keep it on the screen. But if I hold the throttle, you can see it will go up to 44 miles an hour Oh, the battery's actually been worn a little, but I don't know if it really does go to that. <laughs> but, but I thought that was pretty cool that it actually has this high range to go. Now, this is a 30 mile an hour rated bike. So, which means it is actually classified as an off-road bike only. It's not really technically on most U.S. different um, streets and roads here. It's allowed technically on there. But, of course, you can limit all of that so that you can stay within the legal limit range here. And another thing is being at 1,500 watts, that's over most of the legal limits here throughout the United States as well. So, just keep that in mind with this bike here. It is an off-road performance bike. It does a killer job. I mean, and I don't know. Oh, so, it does also, last thing is, it does have a headlight. And this headlight, you know, by turning it on, you can just, oh, it has one button here for a quick push and it is quite bright. So, you know, it doesn't look like, it's not a, a light where you are here so that you can really see more of it. It's more of a light for you to be seen when you're out there. And same thing as the tail light that's back there as well. And um, we have multiple functions that are just typical here by another mode function. As you're going through the mode, it has five pedal assist levels. It also has a seven speed uh, gear shifter derailleur in the back here with seven cogs and um, oh and one thing I also wanted to point out here is we also have a double chain ring for your off-road riding so that it holds your chain within and this is a plastic chain ring which is, again is very functional here just to keep the chain from popping off and that's really good there and on the back side here we can also take a look we have our turning derailleur seven speeds it's very functional, you know, smooth, and I have no issues with it. The only thing that did come, this was a little bent when it came from shipping. That was FedEx's fault that came in, but, you know, it was a really easy fix to come out. So that was the only problem with the shipping that I also had here. And, um, oh, so I'm locked here. So this is the first bike I've come across that has pedal lock. So if you come on this side here, one thing you need to know is that if you roll the bike back, the pedal will lock on here so you will need to lift the bike up here and I was wondering you know most of my bikes don't have pedal lock issues because they put the thing back here but the design of this frame this is the only practical place that they can actually put it but as long as you're aware that there's pedal lock it's not that big of a deal and also the lock the pedal being I mean the kickstand being right here where it's at helps the bike to have the most stable positioning when it comes to uh, having your bike at, at a rest position. The bike also does not come with the following. I put my own mirror because of where we're riding today. I also put this cell phone holder. You can get this at uh, ebikeproducts.com on the world website. And uh, we also have our bottle holder. <laughs> and this here 
is actually a uh, our speedometer so we actually can see our our speed of the bike that we're riding as well so all the speeds that you are seeing rated as we are riding is from this bike itself here the mirror is a half knee mirror you can also get one of these we um, I have affiliate links in the bottom for this but I also recommend everybody get a mirror on any e bike that you're actually riding around with the last thing I want to mention is this shifter is the uh, SIS Shimano shifter this is a basic shifter very functional thumb up push down thumb up and that's all you need to do to shift your one one step gearing through that as well so this is again the Alstom motor s18 1500 it's a 1500 watt off-road bike beast of a bike runs under two thousand dollars at this point i think I, some prices i've seen it even at 1900 and uh, i'll have a link below to places that you can also go where prices might be best and also any discount codes will also be listed in the description below so be sure to look there thank you so much for watching and um, don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video